Okay, so we got the following question. Someone has a crimson belly conure and two cockatiels, but the crimson belly conure prefers the husband and nips at her, and the cockatiels, my own theory, who knows if I'm right or wrong, is cockatiels used to be nothing but affectionate, and my cockatiel doesn't like to be touched, and I've heard other people say the same. I think they've been like so overbred. It's like their sweetness got bred out of them. Is that possible? Who knows? Anyway, she has two cockatiels and they don't like to be touched. So she's looking for the ultimate bird to cuddle with. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parabless Bond and a few other books. This is Dancing Rosie, my green wing macaw. Probably not a good choice for her because all the rosy night is nice to my husband and I, and she does like to cuddle. She's a little big and could be dangerous with the cockatiel and the crimson. So if I was looking at getting a small parrot, medium, small, kind of size, to cuddle with, and I wanted someone who would get along with the crimson and or maybe the cockatiel, my first choice would be another Puria conure. That would mean another crimson belly conure, maybe a green cheek conure, you know, some, maybe some other species, a black cat. Um, there are several different kinds of crimsons and frankly, as long as it's kind of around the same size, any size conure might be just fine if you wanted like a peach fried conure or something like that. Another option if you kind of just don't want another conure, although that might work really well, but another option is <clears throat> my Quaker Blue is kind of loud a little bit sometimes, but <coughs> excuse me, he's also so friendly, so cuddly. We can't go anywhere around where he is without him like flying onto our shoulder and wanting pets. Very affectionate. And he is affectionate with everyone. So one of the things to keep in mind is that one of the problems is that with parrots, they naturally tend to come into partnerships and have one bonded mate. And so that means that in some instances, when your parrot has that other bird, like the cockatiel, then they may not bond with you as much. I have found in my experience that when I spend time with my parrots, and there's two of them, they stay more friendly, they stay happier and emotionally healthier, physically healthier because they have a cage mate, but they still bond with us. For example, we have two green cheek conures who actually have even had clutches of babies and they still fly around the house and come to us and come to us for pets and that kind of thing. So you might want to try crimson belly conure. You might want to try something different. Like I was saying like a Quaker parrot or another option would be like maybe a hands macaw. A hands macaw is a mini macaw. The hands macaw is gonna be a lot smaller than Rosie here. Or uh, a Cape parrot. These are parrots that I love. And if you want to go a little smaller and you have access or you know, you know, you can find a breeder, maybe a Linny. Linnies are really sweet parrots. They are actually about the same weight, maybe a little bit less than um, the Crimson Belly Conures. And um, they're just sweet, nothing but sweetness. Anyway, there's a couple of options. I don't know, you know, some of it depends on size, what size you're looking at. And don't forget, generally speaking, if you get a fourth parrot now in your home and it's you and your husband, chances are you're gonna bond with that one, no matter what species you get. But the magic ingredient is always time. You have to spend time with your parrot so that you can really forge that bond. Whether you have one parrot, two parrots, or four parrots. Thanks for joining me in this blissful video. Now keep watching. I'm gonna tell you about one of my latest books. Are you getting a new baby macaw or a macaw? Do you know what to do and how to prepare? I've got my one of my latest books, The Parrot Keeper's Companion and Journal, available on Amazon. There'll be a link down below. Are you curious about what you can feed or can't feed your parrot? I've got a list in there. Are you wondering why you need a vet or what information you need on your parrot? I've got a place for you to write it down. This companion and care journal has on the one hand places for you to journal and write things down about your parrot. On the other hand, it also has a place for you to do a wellness check every week. 
parrots hide their illness, so it can be really tricky to see subtle signs that something's wrong, that something's changed, that they need some medical attention. Because when you fall in love with your parrot and you have a blissful bond with them, then you want to keep them healthy because losing a parrot is so heartbreaking. It is just like losing a companion who's so close to you once you've bonded and shared your life with them. So make sure that you get my book on Amazon so that you know what to look for and you can stay aware and on top of your parrot's health and well-being as best you can to maximize your blissful bond. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.